Welcome to the Series Sweep Podcast, where I'm breaking down each and every single Dodgers series for the 2020 season. You can find me, Eric Ulo, on Twitter at E-E-U-L-A-U. Uh, you can find me under Instagram on that same handle. Check out all my cool photos of me doing stuff. Uh, today's podcast, unofficially sponsored by absolutely no one, uh, but I am drinking a nice ice-cold Firestone Pivo. And I got to say, although this podcast isn't sponsored by the great people at Firestone Walker Brewing Company, they make a great beer. If you're going to finish out a Sunday, you should do it with an ice cold Firestone, whatever you want. They got a ton of stuff for you. Big portfolio. I'm not going to go through it all right now. We'll get into it. But unofficially, officially, unofficially sponsored and brought to you by Firestone Pivo. Ice cold, baby. Rock and roll. The Dodgers sweep uh, the Colorado Rockies. Uh, winning all three games. Uh, the teed off with just a incredible performance uh, by Walker Bueller, his best performance of the year. Uh, 11 strikeouts, uh, enter it to a 5-1 win. 11 strikeouts, which equaled his sum of his last two start strikeouts combined. Uh, it just, he looked fantastic. Zero home runs, most innings pitched, zero walks, zero home runs. An encouraging start to see the Dodgers offense back them. If they're going to be a championship contender, or if they're going to win a championship, I should say. I think they already. I think it's fair to say they already are a championship contender. Walker Bueller needs to be at his best. The performance you saw on Friday night, that is the Walker Bueller we're going to need to beat the Cubs, the Cardinals, the Braves, or some crazy NL wildcard team that comes out of the woodwork because they're letting everybody and their mother into the playoffs this year. It is what it is. They're trying to get TV revenue on the grind. I respect it. Game two, a walk-off with Cody Bellinger. He hit a bomb. He didn't even know that he hit the walk-off. It was unclear if the right fielder, which I believe was Hilliard, uh, had caught it. Uh, A great, great game to watch. A great game to listen to uh, on the radio as well if you want that Charlie Steiner, Rick Monday walk-off call. Uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Really, really average start by Dustin May, I would say. Uh, in that game, too. Only two hits allowed, but two walks, only 1K. Uh, when May only has 1K, you know he's not at his best. Uh, credit the Rockies. They came up with a good approach. Clearly, they'd watched a ton of film on May. And shockingly enough, May has the most games started by a Dodgers starting pitcher this season and the most innings pitched. Uh, another great reason why the guy has to stay in the rotation. Not, not that I'm hearing or reading or seeing anything that he might not, not might not be in the rotation moving forward. Uh, but just he's cemented his status. He's a he's a great pitcher. Got to leave him in. Uh, that was also the game uh, where Blake Trinan threw a wild pitch t- for the Rockies to go up three two. That was in the top of the seventh. I'll get to Blake Trine in here uh, in a later portion. But you also had a bad air by Corey Seager uh, in the top of the sixth to get Story to second base, and he eventually scored to tie the game at 2-2. Game two was a little messy for the Dodgers. You had two errors, uh, and a team that has fielded the ball very, very well. Very well. So that was a May start. Uh, game two, you had Walker Buehler in the starting game one. Game three, uh, today, Sunday. Uh, great day for baseball and cold beer. Speaking of, this is my first today. Promise. Scouts honor. Uh, game three, 11 to three win, seven home runs. Just, just kicked the Rockies out of town. Goodbye. Uh, the blemish of this game today was another bad start uh, by Rosh Stripling. Uh, Stripling gave up two home runs. Didn't look good. Robertson trust him, yanked him early, went got into the bullpen. Uh, that the Dodgers offense started really rolling, uh, so it wasn't obviously it was not a close game. It was 11-3, but there seemed to be this inflection point in the game when he pulled Stripling that Roberts was concerned uh, the Rockies could get in there, get the lead, keep the lead, possibly win the game. I love that he went for the kill shot. I love that he called a double steal with Chris Taylor and Mookie Betts today. It was awesome. Um, speaking of Mookie Betts. Two home runs today, two stolen bases. There's a short list of players, a short list of players that can do that. Uh, the two stolen bases and two home runs in the same game. I know you've been slumping a little bit, but just great to see. The guy's clearly a, a leader, and I, I love that he both does it vocally uh, and on the field with his play. 
the contract, I'm not going to get, you know, I'm going to enjoy the Rocky sweep. I'm not going to, every time Betts has, you know, I think he was 0 for 1 for 17 or in a slump. I'm not going to start worrying about the contract right now. I'm going to worry about the fact that he helped power our team to a decisive, decisive 11-3 win over the Rockies. And in a game two that was their 17th game in 17 days. Winning two out of three against the Rockies would have been great. I, I think we all would have been okay with that. Uh, but the fact that you swept them heading into the off day, that's just a really, really good feeling. You see the series score there, 20 runs to seven. Uh, the offense looked great. The offense was dominant, a 303 average. Uh, the arms did a good job. I'd give them a B uh, overall, just because May start was eh, stripling start was whoa. And there was a, a bullpen touch up or two, uh, especially with Mr. Blake trying. The bullpen ERA, 1.5, still rock solid. They're just in a great spot uh, from the bullpen piece. The parallel. Universe Matt Kemp showed up. Uh, I forgot he was on the Colorado Rockies. It was bizarre to see. He's got a completely different look. It looks like if you use create a player on baseball and then just did some really strange things to make the guy look kind of ridiculous. Maybe it's just because I never thought. I, the, him in a Padres jersey, that was fine. Him in the Braves jersey, it was kind of weird. Him in the Reds jersey, it was whatever. But to see him back in an NL West uh, division rival team was kind of bizarre to me. Thought it was cool. He happened to be in town for, for Kobe Bryant Day uh, today at the stadium, so that was kind of cool. Um, but other than that, I, I think he's kind of washed up. God bless the Rockies for, for throwing it out there and, and letting him get some ABs. So. And the DH obviously helps Matt Kemp a lot. But good to see him. It's like seeing a really, really old friend uh, who's just kind of gone through the ringer. Um, luckily he had made plenty of money in his career. Thanks to that contract from Ned Coletti, which was deserved. Uh, but just couldn't go through this whole podcast without mentioning Matt Kemp. Blake Trinan's wild pitch that gave the Rockies that three, two lead in the seventh inning in game two, uh, on Saturday night. I'm just going to plant my flag on the ground on this. Not a Blake Trinan guy, not at all. And, and, and not in the sense that I don't ever want to see him in a game. I think he has his moments. I think he has some value to this team. I'm glad we signed him. What I'm saying is I want to avoid a Pedro Baez situation where a guy puts together an incredible regular season stat line and just blows it in the playoffs. And the reason I think Trinan could blow it is because you saw the walks on a couple appearances against the Padres, the wild pitch against the Rockies, the meltdown in Arizona, although none of the runs were earned. I think this is my third podcast mentioning that in a row. I'm fixated on it, damn it. Uh... The guy, that two-seam fastball, that bowling ball, or sorry, power sinker, that bowling ball of a power sinkle, it's an incredible pitch. It's right up there. Um, I mean, there's a lot of good signature pitches for the relievers for the Dodgers. You have Gratterall's two-seamer. You have Dylan Floro's two-seamer. You have Dustin May. I mean, you, you go on down the line. But when he's not locating that thing and he looks like Joe Kelly when he's just chucking it and praying that it hits the strike zone, it makes me nervous. And it's not something, it's not a guy I want in the eighth inning in a playoff series. I think Dave Roberts sometimes falls in love with these guys. I think you see the usage with Blake Trinan. He's definitely a favored arm for Dave Roberts and the stats right now back that up. I have some leg- I have concerns about him being able to get outs in the playoffs and not give up big hits and not walk dudes in the playoffs. And there's one thing as a reliever, this is an old baseball saying, you can't walk dudes as a reliever in the playoffs. Can't happen. Can't happen. Not having it. Like Blake Trinan, think he has some value to this team. I'm nervous that he's becoming one of Doc's favorite guys. I think he already is one of Doc's favorite guys. He's going to get put in a tough position in the playoffs, when, especially in a three-game first series. And I don't trust him to get the outs. I don't hit him. I don't trust him to hit the cat, the catcher's pitch location. I, I don't like it. I just don't like it. I got a feeling. I'm calling it right now. It's gonna it's gonna be one of those things where the stats look great. John Smoltz and Joe Buck or whoever the hell's doing the game in the playoff. Oh, sub one ERA's just got not a power sinker a season with the A's. Yeah, that's great. And he's a talented guy and he's got some weapons and I hope he does great for us. I'm not hoping for him to fail. I'm hoping that he's not the dude, the guy, excuse me, let's get a little more professional here. The guy in the eighth inning who rolls into a playoff game two and is supposed to get two out. Our stat of the series uh, has to go out to the Dodger starters uh, even with Ross Stripling, he, he wasn't that bad. Uh, ah, he's pretty good. Anyway, uh, the starter ERA 2.40 uh, in the series set the table 
uh, allowed the offense to not press at the plate, be really selective, and really start going on all cylinders. But it's it's nice to have that feeling as a hitter in the box when you know that you don't need a swing uh, for a home run every time because this pitching staff and the bullpen has you covered. The chemistry-changing moment of the series uh, has to be Nolan Arenado in the top of the sixth against Walker Buehler with two on runners on second and third uh, flying out uh, to left field. Arenado, Gold Glover, Silver Slugger, probably going to be a Hall of Famer. He's been he's nails. He's been slow to start this season, but you expected a superstar like that uh, to plate some runs. And who knows what happens with the series if you if they end up winning that game, uh, get those extra runs against Walker Buehler. You you just you just never know. Our Steve Pierce Award goes to Ryan McMahon, the second baseman, uh, even though he only went two for ten. A couple runs scored in his walk uh, set up that go-ahead run there in game two. So I think that was that was a big a big play for him, and I, pre- I respect the hell out of him for, for taking that walk. So there's our stat of the series, chemistry change moment of the series, and our Steve Pierce Award sponsored by Nobody Yet. Now we got to get to Ross Stripling, who in August has been awful. Awful, and this is a, this is a player that I've stumped for a, a guy that I think deserved his spot in the starting rotation at the start of this season. He's gone. He's done everything and anything this coaching staff has asked for as far as roles, especially after coming up as kind of a hot starting pitching prospect for the Dodgers. His you know no hitter career debut against the Giants uh, years ago, where Roberts pulled him after I believe it was seven and a third, which I have no problem with that. But you look at the ERA, you look at the whip, you look at the amount of home runs he's giving up. He hasn't completed six innings in August in four starts. That is not that is not a good sign. You look at the home runs there, eight home runs given up. Three of these starts are at home. I, I know it was hot this weekend in Colorado, or sorry, in Los Angeles against Colorado, so the ball was really flying out of the park, hence the seven home runs for the Dodgers today. Uh, but you look at Seattle, it's not a great hitting team. You shouldn't be giving up sixer, and that was nuclear meltdown status, uh, as we spoke about in the Series Sweep podcast for the Mariners. But you just look at that August sheet, and I, he earned the opportunity. He has not earned the, the right to stay in the rotation. And as David Lopez42 on Twitter suggests, sending him to USC uh, for alternative training. Uh, let's pump the brakes here. I, I think there's a guy... Uh, that needs to be sent back to USC, uh, who does not need to be on the who has not proven himself uh, besides a great performance against the Houston Astros, and that's Dennis Santana. Uh, Santana's last couple appearances have not not looked great, giving up runs. Uh, the Mariners' appearance, you know, where he went, I think it was walk single, home run, walk single. Uh, you you can't be doing that. So I, I think he's a guy that that they can send send down, so to speak, send out to USC. I think Ross Stripling probably goes in the bullpen and is that swing guy, which I'm sure he's not going to like. And, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for Tony Gonsolin to get involved uh, with Stripling struggling. But that's that's a lot of data. I mean, that's four starts. That's not that's not one or two bad starts. And that, that ERA, 7.27 in August, the home run rate. Sorry for the extra digit there on the whip. I guess I was just being thorough uh, at 1.87. The, the control has been okay. Uh, it's really those f- those flat fastballs that don't move. They're getting crushed into the stands, uh, as well as when that curveball, which I think a lot of teams have gotten very smart about, is they just don't swing at the cur- at his curveball. They just don't. I mean, if it's a two two count, they're going to. But you saw with the Mariners, they're very smart about it. Stripling even recognized it in the post game. They're really good at staying off curveballs. They didn't like so that that I think that's probably a wrap for Ross Stripling as a starting pitcher uh, consistently for the Dodgers. Maybe they use him. Uh, to get an, everyone an extra day of rest uh, when he's in the bullpen, but could open up a big opportunity for Tony Gonsolin. Uh, Tony Gonsolin, a guy that we've I've pumped up a lot on this podcast. I'm I'm a believer, and I will I'm I would like to think I own the first ever condo on Tony Gonsolin Island. I would. If you want to come join me, you can. It's awesome. We have a really cool beachside cabana. Uh, but I'm I'm all in on Tony Gonsolin. I think he's a legit starting pitcher. I think the numbers speak for themselves uh, for what he's been able to do when called upon this season. Uh, we get to our injury list uh, real quick. Alex Wood still out uh, throwing more sim games. You have Edwin Rios with his hamstring. Uh, still, that was not the correct way to pronounce ham- hamstring. But anyway, uh, he's still out. Pedro Baez still out with a groin injury. And Joe Kelly still dealing with shoulder soreness. 
Uh, he will have to serve his five-game suspension once he's activated from the IL. Will Smith came back today, hit a bomb uh, during the, in the sweep job uh, that the Dodgers put on the Rockies. It was great to see him out there. Uh, Austin Barnes had a key moment uh, in this series to get some more runs in where he failed. Uh, but still really happy with where Austin Barnes is as a hitter. Uh, we get to the standings real quick. And then we'll flip over to the schedule. The Dodgers, 22-8, and eight, officially halfway through the season. S- slated for 44 wins, on track for 44 wins. Going to hit that over uh, for 42 wins that Vegas had put in, uh, put on the board uh, before the season started. A lot could happen between now and then, but this, you're starting to look at the playoff picture. You're starting to see you know, who we're going to play in that three-game series, which just could be wild. Uh, right behind them, we're not right behind, but four games back is San Diego at 18 and 12, which is, I think they've kind of come out as the second best team in the NLS with the Rockies just going one and nine in their last 10. They've been brutal. Uh, the Giants, they've been hot recently, six and four in their last 10. I don't think anyone really expects them to upgrade their roster, although they did call up top prospect Joey Bart. Uh, Arizona, which was my pick to be the second best team of the NL West, whoops, uh, they've been pretty rough too. So that's where you got your four games back with San Diego. San Francisco and Colorado are tied for third at uh, eight games back. And the next series, the Dodgers, the next series the Dodgers will play against a team that currently has a winning record will be the middle of September. I believe it starts the 13th, 13th or 14th against the San Diego Padres. They're going to play Texas. So they're going to play San Francisco next, then Texas, then Arizona twice, and then Colorado, all of whom are under 500. All of whom are under 500. And I think this Dodgers team, talented, yes, best best record in the majors, check mark. They've beaten up on some crappy teams. They're 6-3 and three against the two teams, the two legitimate teams, in my opinion, Astros and the Padres this year. I want to see more games against quality competition, which the whole point is we're not going to see that probably until mid-September. They can't take their foot off the gas. Let's not get too high in the saddle, uh, as I like to say, on this Dodgers team right now. Yes, they are good. Yes, Bellinger is starting to warm up four home runs in the last five five games. But they still need to play. They need to prove themselves against quality competition. They're still 6-3 and three against that quality competition. Let's not just start spreading out memes like we won the championship when we sweep the Rockies, who were in a tailspin to begin with. Coming up, the San Francisco Giants, a team that we've played a lot this year so far, Tuesday, because the Dodgers have their first off day uh, in a long time tomorrow. Uh, Tuesday, 6.45 start, Julio Urias versus Johnny Cueto, or Johnny Cueto, as Vin Scully used to say, the great Vin Scully. Uh, 6.45, you have Kershaw and Kevin Gossman. Kevin Gossman pitched really well uh, against the Dodgers in a previous start. Thank God Kapler is an idiot and pulled him out too early. Thanks, buddy. Uh, and then Thursday, you have Walker Bueller and Logan Webb. Logan Webb, another guy that pitched well against the Dodgers. So don't let the ERAs fool you for either of these guys, any of those three guys. They can all pitch well against the Dodgers. They've seen the Dodgers a lot. They're familiar with us. Uh, it's not gonna, it's just going to be a walk in the park. Uh, that is a, a key off day for tomorrow. I think you, got, you need these guys to recharge. And then we're just going to go right back into it. Uh, you got that getaway game for that, the reason that 505 game on Thursday is at that earlier time uh, so the Dodgers can fly out to Dallas, Texas to play the Rangers. Uh, thank you, as always, for listening. You can follow me. You can ask me questions on Twitter, at E-E-U-L-A-U. Uh, Instagram, text me if you got my number. Uh, if you don't have my number, you're not missing out on much. Uh, officially, unofficially sponsored by no one. We're selling ad space. It's $0 right now uh, for a 30-second read. You know, Throw something my way. We'll talk. We'll work out the details. Um, you know, whether it's a free pizza or, you know, a $5 off Starbucks card, you know, wh- whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm, I'm here for the business. I'm about that life. Uh, let's see what we can do. But thank you as always for listening to the Series Suite podcast. Uh, you please subscribe, rate, review. Uh, you can also find us on Spotify and SoundCloud under the Series Sweep. Uh, stay cool. Stay safe. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Uh, and ha- let's have a great week. And I'll talk to you soon.